Good Yontif. Um, because I'm new this year uh, to the presidency and we haven't gotten to know each other um, as well as I would like, I just want to tell you a little bit about my background because I think it relates to what I want to speak about today and so I hope um, you'll indulge me a little bit. Belonging to a synagogue has been a constant in my life. My grandfather was a poor Russian Jew who was conscripted into the Tsar's army. One night, he got out of his tent to smoke a cigarette and he overheard some other soldiers plotting to kill the Jewish ones. He decided he wasn't gonna stick around to see that happen. So he stole a horse and he rode across into Romania and then across Europe and ultimately to the United States although the details of his journey have been lost somewhat to time. What we know is he brought three things with him. He brought my grandmother, and he brought his Jewish religion, and he brought his knowledge of how to make bagels. <laughs> and he ended up in Boston, and in 1917, he started the first bagel bakery here in the Boston area. And back then, they made them by hand, and my grandfather and later my father, who worked beside him, kind of uh, imitated the motion. They had kind of almost like a dovening motion, which was almost spiritual to watch. Uh, I guess this is the wrong day to be talking about bagels, right? <laughs> okay. Um, but my, my grandfather was an active member of Kehila Jacob, and, which was an Orthodox show in, in Mattapan, and he was very tied to his religion. I, I have been able to find uh, Jewish newspapers which, uh, which uh, show that he was the president of the Golden Age Circle and the Jewish Workmen's Circle. I found um, CJP and Zionists and donations to Zionist causes in his name. So, so this, I tell you this because this is, this is what I know. As a child growing up, this is what I knew. And being Jewish and belonging to the synagogue was, was part of our life. I grew up in Milton, and um, we belonged to a conservative synagogue there. And my mother was involved in sisterhood and organized what they then called donor dinners. We, um, we were pretty basic. We didn't have a lot of, of money then, um, but we had everything we needed. Later, um, later on, my father, who returned from the war, went to BU School of Engineering, invented a a machine that actually stamped out bagels and production went from a few hundred dozen to 40, 50,000 bagels a day. And, um, you know, more dough is more dough. So we, <laughs> um, we, you know, at, at, we were more comfortable. But, um, but my point is that we never perceived paying temple dues as, as um, an extra thing. It was, it was what we needed to do. It was always in our life. And I, I, to this day, I can remember my mother, they had little tear sheets then, and you'd tear the coupon off, and you'd put them in the envelope, and you'd send in your monthly dues. This all meant, of course, that I went to Hebrew school. That's what we called it then. We didn't call it religious school. Um, I totally do not remember having a wonderful, inspiring Rabbi Idison. <laughs> Mostly what I remember is the rabbi trying to keep a bunch of noisy kids quiet, but you know, maybe that's a kid's perspective. But uh, what's important is the connections I made there. They lasted me a, a lifetime and led me to the first temple I joined as an adult and then ultimately to here. When I was in my 30s and single, I moved to Springfield for professional reasons, and I knew exactly two people there. One, of course, was a friend from Hebrew school, and one was a friend from college, and um, I knew no one. I, I, I was lost at sea. I had no Jewish community around me, so what was I gonna do? I joined the synagogue where my friend from Hebrew school belonged. The other friend actually also belonged there, and of course they knew each other. That's, you know, Jewish world. Um, but those connections actually led me to meeting my husband, uh, Barney, and we were married in that temple 30 years ago. How we met is a good story for another day. Um, actually, it's two stories, depending on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, so I, I got active in the temple there, and I served on the board. Um, we lived there for about 18 years. And then we moved here. And once again, I had that disconnection. I was not part of a community, and I really remember the weight of it because it was right around this time, it was Rosh Hashanah, around Rosh Hashanah that we moved, and we really felt that we didn't belong anywhere, and we were uncomfortable without a Jewish community around us. 
Um, we did know one person here, and it was someone who had moved from Longmeadow, where, uh, where we were living, um, who had become the temple administrator here before the incomparable Steve Weiner became our executive director. Uh, later I realized I, I knew a couple of people here, but I didn't know it at the time. So we paid our dues and we came here for the next high holy days and, and that's about it. I'm gonna make a true confession here. I'm not gonna tell you I was comfortable, I wasn't. I had trouble feeling that I belonged, uh, partly because I had moved from orthodox conservative to reform, partly because I was working all the time and just couldn't make those connections. I'm, I'm sure you know what I, what I mean. But I did start to wonder, are we gonna feel like we belonged here or are we just kind of going to pay our dues and show up on high holy days. So then there was a big coincidence. We got a new rabbi, and we were invited to meet Rabbi Gurevitz. And when I met her, I, I felt entirely different. I really felt that I could start to belong here. And I want to acknowledge and thank you, uh, Rabbi Gurevitz, for all that you do to make us all feel that we do belong here in a physical way, in a spiritual way, both. So that brings me to what I wanted to talk about today, belonging and moving from being dues-paying members to really belonging to the congregation. And that is what I and our board of directors and with our clergy's guidance and some help from additional people who are not on the board are really making a priority this year. The last few years have been really hard. Our sense of belonging has been broken as socializing stopped and despite the excellent technology that our, our former great uh, president Stephen Goldstein was able to help us with technology to keep us together, the pandemic kept us apart. And our board and our leadership want to respond to that, to, to respond to that period of withdrawal by helping forge those connections, by being more intentional about how we ensure that our members feel they belong. So I'm not asking for any money today. Instead, I'm going to ask you please to step in, step up, and be part of this belonging initiative. Come belong with us as we try to make connections and we focus on people and the spaces and we recreate groups and experiences for people to feel they belong. So for example, we started to identify different cohorts of people in different life stages. For example, par uh, parents with, student, uh, with kids in the religious school, or parents who are just sending off their kids to college, or people over 65 who are single, or grandparents who moved here to be closer to their children. And what we want to do is create opportunities for those people of similar life stages to connect with each other. For example, we offered uh, bagels and coffee at the school drop-off on Sunday mornings. I know, bagels again, stop, right? <laughs> I know, <laughs> I feel it too. Um, we are also taking a look at spaces we occupy. If you've been here lately on a Friday night, you might have experienced that we've broken into conversation at the end of the service, just for a few minutes with guided questions that are purposefully designed to help us get to know each other better and to feel accepted and included. If someone asks you to be part of this initiative, I hope you'll say yes. Um, and please don't feel you need to be, wait to be asked. If you're interested, please let one of us know. We'd love to include you in helping us to create these opportunities for belonging. At our services are extraordinary so cantorial soloists, Sharon Brown Goldstein and Lisa Marcus Jones lead us beautifully as we sing Hine Matov Umanayim, how good and pleasant it is to be together. And in our tradition, we know that when two people are sitting together discussing Torah, the Shekhinah, God's presence, is with them. And in our culture, the roundness of the bagel is an affirmation, <laughs> not only of the circle of life, but also of inclusiveness and belonging. I know I'm going to enjoy belonging when I go to the community breakfast tonight. I know I'm really gonna enjoy that bagel. <laughs> um, I hope I'll see you there. If I don't see you there, please let's share a bagel and a shmer another time at this temple. Gamar Kriti Matova. <laughs>